My guest for today is musician Bill Kurt, who started pursuing his passion for music back when he was just a teen, and he hasn't stopped since. He's been in tribute bands, formed his own group, and writes and plays his own music. He's currently working on his fourth studio album. Welcome. So, um, thank you so much for being here today, Bill. Hey, Kat. Thank you so much for, for having me. It's good to see you. Been a long time. Yeah. Even though it's virtual, it's nice to see you. It's been years. <laughs> yeah, I think nine or ten years. So yeah, and that nine or ten years ago, with your hit "Home Is Manila," I mean, you're celebrating. What is it? Eleven years now with that song, and people are still hitting you up saying, "Hey, wait a minute, we know you." <laughs> what is that feeling like? <laughs> it's really cool, you know. Um, uh, we live here in Texas, and our mailman is—he's Filipino. And um, I was out in the yard one day, it was a Saturday, and he was delivering the mail, and uh, uh, he got out of the mail truck and said, excuse me, uh, are you the same Bill Kurt, uh, home as Manila? <laughs> I said, yeah, that's me. He said, man, my whole family listens to that song in the Philippines. You know how famous you are. So I don't feel famous, but, but it's really cool, you know, that, that to have that kind of reach. I'm here in Texas, and and the mailman, for God's sake, uh, um, asks me if if that's me, and it's a uh, it's just it, it was really cool. So yeah, uh, it's a beautiful thing to know that you've touched people's lives like that. And I mean, you know, over ten years from uh, later, and you're still touching lives. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it was an amazing song. It, it did a lot, uh, you know, for me. Um, I went to the Philippines. I think it was. Uh, see, this is. I look at my arm because it's when my dad died, so it's 2017. Um, 2018 uh, or 19, I went to the Philippines. Grace was in Davao, and she, she called me up on the phone. She said, hey, jump on a plane and meet me in Manila. So uh, I went to Manila by myself for a few days in, in, the, in Makati near the red light district. That was fun. Um, <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, I woke up in the morning, and there was people that knew I was there that uh, on a Saturday morning that had come from where they lived and I signed some autographs and spent some time with them. So wow, it was really, it was really cool. Wow. And now you're in Texas, you're working on your fourth album. Describe um, the album that you're working on. The album is probably the best I've ever done. Um, you know, before I was a pop rock artist, um, Jim Blossom's type of music. In fact, they played on my first album with me. Three of them did. Um, Jim Blossom's type of pop rock. And um, I just kind of got tired of that. And I got more into the Chris Daughtry type of rock. Um, and this whole album is is pretty much that. And I, I, you've heard some of it already. Um, I just decided that I needed a little more edge. And um, I've talked to, in fact, I got a phone call from uh, the promoter who books the Viper Room in Hollywood uh, yesterday. He said, come on out. And I, I said, okay, I, I will. Um, but we were talking and I, I told him, I said, I think that the style of guitar sound, the, the kind of the classic uh, crunchy guitar sound, um, when you base it against the stuff that's out on the radio today, music goes in cycles. The industry goes in cycles. And every 10 or 15 years, it cycles backwards. And so I think this album is right in the right spot at the right time because I think there's nowhere to go but back to that classic style uh, rock guitar. Uh, only, you know, more updated, kind of like you described to me, more updated, but still that classic sound. And I think that's the direction we're going here in, in the next year. So I'm, I'm hoping that this album actually does well, better than the last. I did an album in 2019, did okay, you know, but uh, uh, I'm hoping this one is going to be the one. Yeah. I think so. Um, you know, the single that you sent me to listen to, like I said, it's just classic. It's a classic sound. I love it. Yeah, when, I, when I'm gone. Yeah, I, I, that's one of my that's one of my favorites off the album. Don't talk about me when I'm gone. 
to tell me what's good for me Well, I'm sorry I don't climb that tree But I know what's right and what is wrong uh, When I'm gone is, is just, uh, I think that's probably going to be my favorite on the album. But we're looking at 10 songs, so it's kind of hard to choose. But... <laughs> For now, it's When I'm Gone. Now, um, tell us what inspired you to write When I'm Gone. Well, When I'm Gone is going to be the, there's going to be two singles released off the album. One is called Two Steps Forward and, and When I'm Gone. They're going to be released uh, not simultaneously, probably two weeks apart. Um, and When I'm Gone, I wrote it um, we lately. Um, our society is, is so divided and um, it, how you feel, how you think, how you look um, is if, if somebody doesn't like it, they absolutely hate you without even thinking twice. And then when you walk away, they just talk about you. Um, and, and I wrote the song kind of to say, hey, look, I have long hair. I don't really fit in everywhere. I have my own thoughts. I have my own feelings. I am myself. And just, you know, when I walk away, just, you know, say goodbye. Uh, and that's it. And, and don't talk about me. And, and uh, because I don't do that to other people. And I think the song may resonate with other people who, who feel the same way. Um, and, and especially, you know, I've, I'm only looking maybe another 20, 25, 30 years, maybe more uh, before I'm not on the earth. And, and I don't want people to talk about me when I'm gone. It, it's, uh, so it was kind of a twofold thing. Um, when I'm off the earth, just say goodbye and, and keep going. And while I'm here, don't judge me. You know, uh, we're, we're, we all put our pants on, you know, one leg at a time. And um, we're here on the earth to, feel and believe and think differently. And we shouldn't hold that against one another. And I see that all too often now. So uh, I just wanted to write about it. And that's how the song came out. I'm real proud of it, actually. I think that's why it resonated with me when I heard it. I thought, wow, very good message, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping other people pick up on it and, and feel like, you know, he wrote that for me or for us or for, you know, and, and uh, I, I hope it goes that way. I hope, I, I think it, it will, if people hear it. <laughs> That's the other thing is getting it out so people hear it. You know, I've, all my stuff is, you know, I have a small uh, contract with a small record label and publisher and, and I'm on probably 450 streaming sites all over the world, uh, you know, but it, it's when you're on that many sites, you think, wow, how do you market that? And I'm terrible at marketing. So I'm looking at three or 4,000 streams a month when I could possibly be getting, you know, 10 to 11 or 12,000 streams a month. I'm just a terrible marketer. I have to learn that. So it's a work in progress, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> but the beauty of social media, there's, you know, so many different outlets now that you can share it. Yeah. In fact, I just did two ads for both songs. Uh, I put them out on Instagram uh, the past two nights and I'm just hoping people see them and, and go to the website. They'll be up on the website here in about another week and a half after they're mastered. So and the website, I, I, I don't think anybody uses websites anymore. I, I, I think that I'm a dinosaur. I have a website and people use Facebook and uh, other platforms. And here I am with a website. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I still use websites. Oh, okay. So you're a dinosaur with me. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. There's too much. Sometimes I feel like um, there's too many different social media sites. It's like Instagram, Twitter, you know, YouTube, yeah. Facebook. Now this is your, like I said, fourth album and mm -hmm. you're doing it all. Talk about that I process. Am. It's tough. Um, you know, I'll sit and write it out. You know, sometimes I don't even write it out. I just plug in and, and if I have a hook in my head, I'll just, uh, I'll just record an acoustic guitar to the hook. And then I sit down and um, I don't use a drummer. I, I will be soon on a couple of tracks, but I don't use a drummer. I, I write the drum tracks myself. And then I use uh, 
uh, other apps that I have. I won't use loops. I, I refuse to use loops. So I write the, the drum tracks MIDI and then I place a kick drum sample on every kick drum note that I write. And it can take two weeks to write a drum track. Wow. And once I have the drum track in, then I, I go ahead and start recording everything else. But uh, yeah, I've done it all myself. Now, my Grammy stuff, uh, I write, you remember Andy, my other guitar player, Andy Zuckerman, and we, uh, uh, we have uh, our writing project called The Ghosts of Winter. Uh, that, they're on, we're on YouTube. I think we have nine songs up there. And uh, we did a song in 2018 that I, this is interesting. I, when my father died, he left me uh, a box. And in that box was a letter that my great grandmother had written during the Civil War, because my great grandmother got married again at in her 70s and had children. So that's why it's my great grandmother instead of my great great grandmother. But she had written a, a letter to her lover during the Civil War. And uh, he was a colonel in the Union Army. And um, she wrote a poem letter to him. And later after the war, after his wife died, he had seven children with that wife. Then they got married and had seven more children in their 70s. So I had that letter and I had it out and I, I wrote a song around it. And then I got with Andy and Dave Buckner from Papa Roach. And the three of us wrote a song called uh, You Don't Want Me. And we got that song. We crossed the T's, dotted the I's and got that song up on the Grammy consideration list for best rock song of the year in 2018. And then uh, 2019, Andy and I had two more songs up there. Um, we haven't submitted anything since then. We've just been too busy writing stuff. But uh, uh, so I have that, the Ghost of Winter stuff, and I have my, my albums. Yeah, I do everything myself except for the stuff I do with Andy. So That um, story just gave me goosebumps to get a letter or to have that letter. I do have it. I do have it. Um, it's an amazing letter. And... Um, the song is actually amazing. Um, it's kind of a, uh, well, it's different. You'd have to hear it. Um, you can, it's, it's on YouTube under Ghost of Winter Call. In fact, it's on my SoundCloud page uh, called You Don't Want Me. But um, yeah, it, it, it's a great song. It will give you chills. It's a good rock song. Definitely checking that one out. Now, you've had um, quite a challenging several years. I, yeah. I know you were mentioning to me that yeah. you almost had your hand amputated and you've had yeah, surgeries. And, uh, and In 2016, I was, was working in the driveway on some things and I slammed my thumb with a hammer. No big deal, right? I thought, oh, okay, I'll be playing guitar in, in a month or two. It'll be fine. And, and um, uh, my hand surgeon, because I've had uh, six hand surgeries uh, for arthritis and stuff like that. My hand surgeon took me in and did a nail bed repair on the thumb. No big deal. You'll be up and running pretty soon. Um, but two weeks later, I ended up with a MRSA staph infection inside my hand. And it got as big as a grapefruit. And I, I, I was in the emergency to yell and cut it off. Just cut it off. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and my, my surgeon was out of town and he came back in uh, that night and in the morning I said I'm gonna lose my hand he said I don't know he said it's, it's pretty bad so uh, I think it was about a 30 45 second decision whether they were going to save the hand or cut it off and fortunately they saved it but I lost the the use of these last two fingers here so I had to I took two years to retrain myself how to play guitar uh, with kind of kind of open uh, tuning with this my forefinger and I can augment with my middle finger but it took me two years to perfect that and now it's like nothing it's just you know I can do it in my sleep so that and I've had other issues I've had uh, I have a, a, a condition called my microvascular ischemic disease uh, in my brain and uh, they keep finding lesions and um, it goes through physical therapy to train my brain how to use different parts of my brain to, to control muscles and, and movements and cognitive and stuff like that, but you wouldn't even know it now. It's, it's, uh, unless you're, unless you've known me forever and you see me normally you, you, walking on the street, you wouldn't even know it. So, so yeah, a lot of challenges, but you know, I just, uh, I just keep rolling. Yeah. So. What, um, I mean, huge challenges. How do you, 
How did you um, persevere? <laughs> what helped you through it all? Oh, you know, you have to have faith, uh, the faith in God. And uh, that woman out there who's watching TV, uh, without grace, I, I, I couldn't have gotten through any of it. So she's, she's my rock, and you know her very well. So um, my Filipina, uh, she's an amazing woman. And uh, her and, and the will inside and, and my faith in the Lord is uh, what got me through everything that I've been through. It's beautiful. Um, she is great. I was hoping we'd get to see her just a little bit. You're I wanted to... not going to see her. I said, come on, you haven't seen Kevin. No, I am not going in there. Oh, so, she's funny. <laughs> yeah, she's a crack up. <laughs> now, you've been in the industry for quite some time. What advice would you give for people that are just starting out? Oh, that, you know... <sighs> That's a tough question. I, I do, I counsel a lot of young artists and I, I produce some. And um, the thing that I try to push forward is you're not going to be a millionaire. Um, put that in your head first. If it comes, that's fantastic. But right now you say, I just want to be respected. I want, to, I want to be good. I want to be respected. I want to be recognized as an artist um, uh, for what I do best. Um, and don't try to do more than what you know. Uh, learn the business from old guys like me. Uh, the business is not kind. It is not kind. Um, it is tough business. And if you're in it for anything else at the start, if you're and at the end, if you're in it for anything else other than what's in your heart, and you want to do what's in your heart, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Um, money will come if you're good enough and you do the right marketing and you get the right mechanism behind you and you get the following. That that will all come. But if you're in it just for that and not in it because music is in your heart, then you're in it for the wrong reasons because there's gonna come a day, you know, I have my heyday, it's gonna, there's gonna come a day when you're not at the top, when you're not in the middle, when you're down near the bottom again, and you're not, you know, I, I'm realistic. You know, I'm, I'm, well, believe it or not, I don't look at it, but I'm 62 now, I'm realistic. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get back up to the top, maybe not even up to the middle, but my heart won't let me stop. So if you're in it for any other reason than to do what's in your heart and touch people and maybe influence younger people as you get older, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. It, it, if, if you're good enough and you have the right mechanism, money's going to come. There's no doubt. Um, but if you're in it just for that reason, don't do it. Um, that's, the, that's the advice I give to the young people that I, it's just a tough business. And um, you've got to have heart. You've got to have heart. If, if you don't, then you're not, you're not in it for the right reasons. And, and eventually you'll end up, you know, nowhere. Uh, you, it's great to get to the top, but you're not going to be there forever. So you, if you don't have the heart, you, you know, don't do it. Yeah, make so. sure it's in your heart and it's something you love because it's a tough yeah. road. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a tough industry. I mean, I've been in it all my life and um, I, I, I'm not knocking it. It's, it's been wonderful for me. I've had some fantastic uh, uh, ups, uh, probably more downs than ups, but um, it's, 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 it's in my heart and, and that's why I do it. So. I could feel it in your music. Speaking of when can Thank we expect you. the fourth album? Um, I'm hoping that it drops near the end of May. Just around the corner. We'll it be looking out corner. for it. <laughs> yeah. You'll for get the first copy. copy. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I'm going to go uh, with actual uh, hard hard product this year. I don't think I'm, I think I'm just going to go with digital. I went with hard product on the last album in 2019. We sold all of it. Um, but um, I think 
digital is going to be the way we go on this one. So. <laughs> Well, to keep updated on all everything you're up to, to catch up with everything, where do we go? I'm going to be actually putting up uh, some new stuff on the website. It's just www.billcurdmusic.com. Sounds so. good. Thank you so much, Bill. A pleasure yeah, chatting so with you. It's so good to see you again. Thank you so much. I'm here. Take care and please say hi to Grace for me. I will. Peace and love, everybody.